Okay, class, uh, we sh uh, definitely missed you. I know this COVID-19 is a craziness. Uh, praise the Lord, we know him and can trust in him. And I hope this will cause us to uh, get in our Bibles more and trust him more. Uh, it's it's uh, interesting times we live in, seeing the Bible come true in our lifetime. In our lifetime, uh, lifetime it's amazing. And so, um, hey, trust in the Lord, he'll get us through. Before I go through the review questions, let me just quickly explain a few things. So I emailed everybody with next week's schedule, and I also told you about quizzes and tests. So how is that going to work? So when you take the quiz, I'll email the quiz to you. I'll also have it on the portal. And so you can download it off the portal, or you can take it right off the email. Print it out 9 in the morning, the day that's given. It won't come until 9 in the morning. It won't be posted till 9 in the morning. Print it out. Take the test sometime that day. Parents will feel just make sure your, your kid takes it without any help. So he can have his calculator. Then at, by the end of the day, by 3 p.m., please email that quiz to me. I will grade them after 3 p.m. And um, I will put your grades on the portal. You'll be able to see the numbers that you missed. I will then make a video of that quiz going over each of the problems. And I'll post that video by 4 p.m., the day that those quizzes are due. The next day, watch that video of that quiz. That's going to help you to understand the things that you still don't know for the chapter. Uh, I believe it's Thursday next week we have our test. And so again, same thing. I will email the test to you. I will also put it on the portal by 9 a.m. on Thursday. And then you'll want to download that, that uh, test, uh, print it off, and then take it and then email me the results again by 3 p.m. on Thursday. If you really need it by 3 p.m. on Friday, but hopefully you won't need that extra day of help. Again, parents, please be careful proctoring the test. Just make sure your students aren't uh, on the internet and getting answers from any other place. Uh, if they need to take up to an hour to take the test, that's fine. Not a problem there with time. All right, so I know these are challenging times, and I know that's uh, not the best, but that will help. Okay, also with any kind of homework that you do, look for your grade on the portal, then also click on the comments on the portal. The comments on the portal are going to tell you the problems that you missed. Now, it's important information. You need to figure out why you missed these problems. And uh, again, I'm posting this review to help you with that. Uh, but it's important that you go back and figure out what's going on and what's wrong. All right. Lots of things coming. I'll try every week on Thursday to email you the next week's schedule so that you know what's coming. And I hope this will be a help to you. Hey, hang in there. We're trying to give you a quality education. You know, we're trying to give you all that you deserve. And we'll do that if you'll hang in there and work with us. All right. If you have any questions, email me. I'm available 24-7. Hey, honestly, us teachers, we're, we're working harder than ever. Um, I'm pushing to get all my stuff done, to be honest with you. Um, and that's uh, an eight to four plus a day. So, uh, but we're here for you. We'll help you out. Email and uh, we'll get going. All right. Let me get into the questions here of this review. All right. The first question was, uh, we are to simplify this and we're also to find any excluded values. All right. So whenever you're simplifying, you have to factor. All right. So factor out the common two out of the top. All right. Okay. And now out of the bottom, factor out the common X. Okay. So that's where we're at. Divide out any common factors. Final answer is 2 over x. Now, what about the excluded values? What values can the variable not be? This x cannot equal 0. There's one excluded value. Also, even before it was removed, this x minus 3 cannot equal 0. Add a positive 3 to both sides, and you'll see x cannot equal 3. There are your two excluded values. Remember, an excluded value is a value that will make the denominator 0, and division by 0 is undefined or infinity. It just does not work, and that's what we're looking for, these values that don't work. Now, if this were any, uh, a function, it would be the asymptotes. We'll get to that later in the lesson. Okay, so here now we have division number 6, and we're still looking for any excluded values. 
Now remember, for division, we've got to invert the second and multiply, right? So the x plus 2 goes on the top, and the x squared plus 2x plus 1 goes on the bottom. i got to factor. Look at the top here. There's a difference of two squares. Plus in the middle of one, minus in the middle of the other, a square root of the front and the front, square root of the back and the back. There we go. Second, this trinomial trial and error, x, x, and what is this? It's going to be a positive 2 and a negative 1. Remember, you're always checking your outers plus your inners to give you the middle. So there's the correct factoring of that. So that's what we have left there. And this one, x, x, and plus 1, plus 1. Again, if you check your outers, that's a positive x and another positive x for your middle. And there's that one. Okay. Now, I might as well do my excluded values right now. From this one, remember, x minus 1 cannot equal 0, so x cannot be a 1. From this one, x plus 2 cannot equal 0, so x cannot be negative 2. All right, this one we already, uh, no, we don't. x plus 1 cannot equal 0. So from that, x cannot equal negative 1. And you'll get another negative 1 here, and it doesn't matter. So there are our three excluded values, and you could write it like this. X cannot equal negative 2, and it cannot equal plus or minus 1. If you want to write it that way, it does not matter. All right, let me finish the problem. Now it's just a matter of dividing out common factors. Okay, there's an X plus 2 divided by an X plus 2. They're gone. Remember, you have to take the whole factor. You can only divide out factors. What else here? Um, okay, here's an x plus 1. There's an x plus 1. All right, they are gone. What else? Um, here's an x minus 1. There's an x minus 1. That's it. What in the world is left? A 1 on the top and that x plus 1 on the bottom. So what's our answer? 1 over the quantity x plus 1, where x cannot equal negative 2 or cannot equal plus or minus 1. All right, next one. So now we have straight multiplication. And again, this is going to be uh, an aspect of factoring here. Let me move this so I can work above and below. All right, factor out common factors first. There's a common 4. That's it. Um, difference of two squares. Plus in the middle one, minus in the middle of the other, square root of the front in the front, square root of the back in the back, right? Okay, now it's a matter of all of this. This is a monomial, monomial. Those are already ready to divide out. Okay, let's do the 4 and the 10. That's a 2 and a 5, right? Oh, and now we could do this 5 and this 5, and they're gone. Okay, cool. The numbers are gone. Uh, let's see, 8, do they want excluded values? They do not, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, what else? x plus 1, x plus 1, gone. x plus 1, x plus 1, gone. Okay, x squared, x cubed, right? Won't the squared, so again, technically, is a x squared times x, right? And it'll get rid of the x squared. Okay, and I think that's it. So what's left in my top? A 2, and the bottom is an x times an x minus 1. Now, technically, you would multiply that out. I'll take it either way, but I can leave it like that for time's sake because of the time factor in this chapter. All right, number 10, another division problem. I'm going to move this down. Here, you know what? I'm going to do it this way. So I want the Oh, woohoo! Yeah, spin around. Oopsie doo. All right, trying to come on, stop. All right, now I got it. Uh, it's a little kilter there. It's going to drive me crazy. Okay, there we go. All right, and remember, this second one, we got to change to multiplication. And so the, <laughs> the bottom goes to the top, and the top goes to the bottom. thought that would help and be quicker, but it didn't. All right. And look, once you get it to multiplication, now you're looking to factor and divide out common factors. So do you see the common three in this top left? Right? Um, bottom right, see this one? Do you see the common two? I hope you do. Remember, first law of factoring, factor out common factors first. 
Okay, bottom left trinomial, A and A. Six, be careful now, six and one does not work. That'll give you a seven in the middle. So it's got to be two and three. Again, remember, your outers plus your inners have to equal the middle. All right, that's the factoring of that. How about this one? A and A, negative three and a plus two. Okay, that's a plus three and a negative two. So again, my outers plus my inners give me that positive two A. All right, let's see what we can get rid of. A plus one, A plus one. A minus 2, no A minus 2 on the bottom. A plus 3, A plus 3. Is that it? That's all I'm seeing. All right, I got a 3 left on top and an A minus 2. And I got a 2 on the bottom and an A plus 2. And that's it. There's my answer. They're not worried about excluded values on this one. So that's it, and we're rolling on. All right, number 12 is a horse of a different color. So these are complex fractions. You have fractions in the numerator or fractions in the denominator. There's more than one way to skin this cat, but the easiest way is to multiply by the LCD of all the denominators. So if you look at those four denominators, the LCD, actually I should be in green because that's usually what I do the LCD in, and the LCD is the x squared. So multiply the top by x squared over 1 and multiply the bottom by x squared over 1. Now be careful, this gets distributed. So I'm going to take the time and show you that here. Let me show you that. Because this is usually where the mistake is made. Do you see how I distributed it in the top? And let me do it again in the bottom. This is usually where the mistake is, and this is usually where you're going to mess up. So we got to do that times the 5 over x squared plus the 2 over x. So notice what happens here. This x wipes out one of those x's, leaves an x. This x wipes out one of those x's, leaves an x. This x squared wipes out that x squared, and this x wipes out one of those x's, leaves an x. Okay, top x plus 3x all over 1, it's gone. Bottom, 5 plus 2 times x is 2x. So add like terms, 4x over 2x plus 5. 4x over 2x plus 5. Can't do any reducing. Remember, you cannot do that 2 and that 4. Why? because this is a binomial, it's one thing, okay? It's tied together by that addition, all right? They're in holy matrimony, don't split them up. Only when all things are being multiplied, or you could do the whole quantity, but you don't have the whole quantity to divide out. Okay, that's what happens a lot and is a key mistake. There's your answer, 4x over 2x plus 5. Next one, all right, addition. You got to say to yourself, self, I'm adding fractions. How do you add fractions? Get a common denominator. Add the numerators over the common denominator. What's the LCD? Look, here's the analogy. If you had, and here I'll use 8. If you had 8 over 7 plus, I'm going to use uh, 11 over 9, you would multiply this one by 9 on the bottom, whatever you do, bottom, same on the top, and this one by 7 on the bottom, whatever you do on the bottom, same, to get to that 63, right? Actually, I could have gotten the 21, right? You know, uh, 63. Yeah, I got to go to 63. So that's what I'm going to do here. So this left one, I got to multiply by x plus 9. Whatever I do to the bottom, do the same thing to the top. And this right one by x minus 9. Whatever I do to the bottom, do the same thing to the top. Now, do you see how I have the LCD? I mean, it's exactly the same as what I did on the left. So here, now I got to be careful. Distribute 8x plus uh, 9 times 8, 72. All right, I'm going to do this back one in black. Now be careful here. This is binomial. x times x is an x squared. x times negative 9, negative 9x. Negative 4 times x, negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 9 is a positive 36. There's your top. Leave the bottom in factored form. 
Now we know that this is a difference two squares. You can multiply it out if you want, but you don't have to. However, you must always add up the like terms in the numerator to finish this type of problem. All right, so what do we get in the top? There's an x squared. I'm putting it in order, right? Positive 8 and a negative 9 is a negative 1. A negative 1 and a negative 4 is a negative 5x. So right now I'm at x squared minus 5x, and then i got to add up my 72 and my 36 at 108 plus 108. Again, over my common denominator, technically, well, you can basically write that, but we know that's an x squared minus 81. I would take it either way. All right, there you go. Common denominator. Add the numerators. Put them over the common denominator. Okay, now we got an equation. This is different. An equation has an equal sign. You don't, you don't want a common denominator. You want to get rid of the denominators. How? By multiplying by the LCD over 1. Not the LCD over the LCD, the LCD over 1. What is the LCD? You got a 5, a 6, and a 10. All right, you can get a 5 and a 6 to a 30, and you can get a 10 to a 30, so the LCD is 30x. What do you multiply a 5x by to get the 30x? A 6, right? So 6 over 6. What do you multiply a 6 by to get the 30x? A 5x, right? So 5x over 5x. What do you multiply a 10x to get to a 30x? By a 3, whatever you do, Bob, do the same thing. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. See, I was just... <laughs> I was just going through like I was adding fractions. Hey, you guys will make that mistake too. It's probably good that I did that. I don't need a common denominator. Now, by the way, I could do the problem that way. It's a long way. No, 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 no. Multiply by the LCD over 1. 30x over 1. 30x over 1. 30x over 1. How do you know if you did this correctly? If your whole denominator every time divides out. If your whole denominator every time divides out. If your whole denominator every time divides out. Good, we got all ones on the bottom. Perfect. Left, 18 plus 5x equals 21. Easy equation to solve, right? Add a negative 18 to both sides. Divide both sides by 5. x equals 3 fifths. Voila, you're there. All right. Oh, you'll always see a problem like this on the SAT, ACT. So learn how to do these. They're not hard. The key is it's one over. So Debbie can set the table for a banquet in 32 minutes. Michaela helps her in 14 minutes. How long will take Michaela? Okay, Debbie can set tables for a banquet in 32 if Michaela helps her. 14. So this is both. So what it is is 1 over Debbie plus 1 over Michaela equals 1 over both. That's, that's all it is. So, how much is Debbie? 32 minutes. How much is Michaela? We're looking for that. How much is both? 14. Remember, we're in minutes. Okay, so this is just LCD. The LCD over 1. Oh, that's ugly. I'm sorry. So, we got a 32, an M, and a 14. Uh, 32. So, we have a 2 there. So, it's going to be 7 times, 7 times 16. Yuck. Look at that ugly LCD. 112M? I think that's right. 112M. All right, at least in my mind, that's what I'm thinking here. Um, so 112M over 1, 112M over 1, 112M over 1. All right, 32 goes into 112. What? 16, 7 times 16. What did my calculator just do? 112 divided by 32. 3.5. What in the world? What is going on here? And my brain is saying, I don't like it. 2 times 16, 2 times 7. Oh, but I need the whole 32. Sometimes I'll see these, you know, 
Again, I should have just done my tar chart 224M. See, I found it because it's a 3.5, and I actually could have done the problem that way. But let me just do it the right way. 224M. Okay, now when I divide 224 by 32, I get 7, and I still have my M. On this one, the M's divide out, so I get plus 224. And this one, I've got to divide 224 by 14. And that's a 16, and don't forget your M. Okay, now it's pretty easy. Uh, let's add a 7M to both sides. And let's divide 224 by 9. Now remember, we're in minutes here. And here, you're going to have to round off 24.9 minutes. If you really want to get technical, you can figure out how many seconds that is, but that's a good enough answer, 24.9 minutes. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, think about um, them working together is less than half. Therefore, Michaela's got to be faster than Debbie. Otherwise, their time together would have been a little bit more than half. So it's less than half, yeah. Good answer. I like it. The mams is happy. I'm happy. The parents are happy. Everybody's happy. All right, 32. Uh, I believe they're looking for all the um, intercepts, any point discontinuities, um, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so a lot going on here. All right, if I'm going to discern this thing, I'm going to factor the denominator. Uh, 3 and 2, positive 3, negative 2 gives me that positive x in the middle. Okay. All right, so I know that from the bottom, x cannot equal 2, and x cannot equal negative 3. I just said, I just said x minus 2 cannot equal 0, and x plus 3 cannot equal 0, and solve those little equations. Okay, so remember, x can't be 2, so that's this value right here. You see how that's a vertical asymptote? So vertical asymptote at x equal 2, and then the negative 3 is here, and you have another vertical asymptote at x equal negative 3. All right, so there's the vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptote. All right, this one's tricky. Remember, the value that's here is the horizontal. You can replace that with a y. So the horizontal asymptote is y cannot equal 0. And that's right here. Right there. That's the horizontal asymptote y cannot equal. That's tricky, I know. That is tricky. Okay. Um, x and y intercepts. X and Y intercept. So remember, to get the X intercept, you put in zero for Y and you solve. And so um, what ends up happening is when you put in zero for Y, this is where you're at. I know this is tricky, but watch. This gets multiplied times that, right? And it gives you zero. So now you're at 0 equals x minus 2 at a positive 2 to both sides. x equal 2 is supposedly the, um, the value of the x-intercept. But guess what? I'm going to use orange here. x cannot equal 2. So this is a point discontinuity point discontinuity at x equal 2. Okay, and then how do you get the y-intercept? Everywhere where the x's are, you put in 0. And here, I'm going to do it in factored form. You can do it in any form you want. That's a 0 plus 3. We'll say, okay, so the top is negative 2, and the bottom is negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6. And that's a one-third. So remember, the x-coordinate is always zero at the y-intercept, and the y is one-third. And there you have it. We've got our vertical asymptotes. We've got our horizontal asymptotes. We found a point discontinuity, and we have our y-intercept. Hey, it's a little challenging, I know. But you can learn that.
and uh, hopefully understand it. All right, last one, we got a graph. So I look at this and I'm thinking about asymptotes. I always want to get my asymptotes in. So I have a y cannot equal zero. Got an asymptote there. And from the bottom, x plus one cannot equal zero. So x cannot equal negative one. So I have an asymptote at negative one. All right, so this is going to allow me to graph this thing, right? Now from here, I'm just going to go x, y chart. X, Y chart. Okay, so let's let's go to the right first. I'll put in zero. So you get two over one is two. So I get zero, two. And then I'll go one, uh, two over two is one. I get uh, one, one. And then I'll go two, two over three is two over three or two thirds. Two thirds about there. I'll go three. I'll get two fourths or one half, right? One half. And look, I already know what's happening. Do you? We're going to approach the asymptote there, and we're going to approach the asymptote there. So there's that side. All right, let me work now this side of the asymptote. So I'm going to go negative. I'm going to go negative two. Two over negative two plus one is 2 over negative 1 or negative 2. So negative 2 is negative 2. All right, negative 3. 2 over negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 4. 2 over negative 3 is a negative 2 thirds. See how we're getting that mirror image? And then when I do negative 5, I get negative 1 half. And again, I know I'm approaching this. See how the asymptotes are important? I'm approaching that asymptote. I'm approaching that asymptote. And there we go. Hey, guys, uh, challenging chapter to some degree. Now, that's most of the review. The only thing that's not on this review is the direct and indirect variation. So be careful. That's, I believe, 9.7 and came after this. Uh, would have been, what, Thursday and Friday's video and homework. So be careful there get you ready for the quiz. So notice your Monday homework is going to be watch the chapter review. Then your Tuesday is the quiz. Then Tuesday night, watch the uh, video of the quiz. Wednesday, um, Wednesday, watch the video of the quiz. And then get yourself ready for that test on Thursday, test on Thursday, and then we go from there. Okay, challenging, uh, but I hope this helps. Trying to give you as much as I can, trying to work as hard as I can to help you out. Okay, that's it.